What about the rumor that came out, the sources saying that the Warriors had made feelers for LeBron with the, uh, I think it was Draymond, uh, Draymond Green had said, go ahead and do this, but that would reunite or sorry, not unite, it would just unite um, Curry and LeBron. And I'm wondering, was there any weight to this or was this just kind of like a feeler out there? Yeah, a very titillating report from ESPN this morning about that. I mean, you know, it's a call, and calls happen all the time. So this is not to discount or, or uh, you know, in any way diminish the report. Um, it's great stuff, really interesting. Uh, the part that I'm not surprised about and that I don't think anybody should be is that these are the conversations you are obligated to have in this league. Um, it, it also noted that Daryl Morey, the Philadelphia 76ers GM, who going all the way back to his Houston Rockets days, Oh, turns over every rock, right? Like, not surprising that he made an inquiry about the possibility of, uh, hey, would LeBron be available? Uh, it's part of the job, and and the the bolder GMs and certainly the ones in a position to do so are going to ask, uh, because hey, if LeBron did want out for any reason, you know, who who wouldn't want to land with Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid in Philly? Like among the places you could go to pursue another championship. That's a logical place. The Warriors, the Warriors and Lakers have the same problem right now, right? Now, LeBron's older than Steph Curry, but the Lakers and Warriors both have a problem with aging cores, aging stars. And yeah, could they have solved each other's problem? Or at least the, in this case, the Lakers solving the Warriors problem more so. I don't know. There was no information in that story about who would have gone back because, you know, it, it never got to that stage, right? It wasn't a negotiation. It was just a question. Hey, any chance you guys would do this? No. Okay, all right, we'll go back to the season and see what we can do. And I feel like at this point, LeBron's future really depends on his kid. It seems like he's he's kind of made it very clear that he wants to play with his son. I mean, so who he knows? Has. I mean, yeah, no, Susie, that goes back like years, back to when Bronny Jr. was like eight years old or something. I can't remember when we first started having these conversations or when LeBron first alluded to this uh, this desire of his to one day play with Bronny in the NBA. And now we're on the verge of it, right? Like it could be as soon as next season. Does that mean that a team that drafts Bronny suddenly has the inside track to sign LeBron? Like LeBron could, here's the funny thing. LeBron has like 50 something million due to him. If he picks up his option and could get that and more, if he resigns with the Lakers, he could sign anywhere he wants for the minimum. If he wanted to, it's not unprecedented. Uh, I don't expect it, but I, you know, I, and again, to be clear, I don't expect that the, the LeBron Bronny thing is so important to him that he's going to somehow sacrifice and like go play in, you know, Charlotte or something just because they they drafted Bronny Jr. But it's another piece of of the intrigue that we have to throw into the mix this summer where it's 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 at least worth discussing and we'll see how LeBron actually acts on it or do the Lakers find a way to just draft Bronny to keep LeBron happy? That's, you know, obviously another very likely scenario. I mean, doesn't that seem like the far more likely scenario? The real estate's right here. His life is here. And I, I can't remember there being a player that teams worked harder to keep happy. <laughs> Yeah, and yet LeBron, you know, uh, like clockwork every four years for the first, you know, or for a, for a period of time, there was was changing teams, right? Cleveland to Miami, Miami back to Cleveland, Cleveland to L.A. I think everybody, I certainly have thought from the moment that LeBron picked L.A. and the Lakers, that that's where he would finish his career and that's where he would retire. And if I had to bet, that's still what I believe will happen. But LeBron has surprised us all before. And, you know, so much in the NBA, especially when you are a player of LeBron's caliber or a team of the Lakers uh, uh, legacy, these are these are entities where like there's only championships and there is nothing else. The Lakers feel that way. LeBron feels that way. The playoffs mean everything for a team like the Lakers. Where do they finish? And if if he feels like there's enough promise there and if there are conversations with Rob Polink in the front office about what else they plan to do this summer to strengthen them. Those are the things that go a long way toward staying. But I also think, to your point, Susie, yeah, I, I think LeBron's happy in L.A. His family's happy there. It seems like a stretch to think that he's going to, like, go bounce around at age 40 in, in December. He'll be 40. I, I, I don't see that happening unless things really ended badly this yeah, season. Yeah, I don't see it happening at all. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.